Well, good evening and welcome back to Rainbow Investing, where we examine a spectrum of ideas to improve your long-term wealth. So in this video, we're going to look over some of the more advanced functions you can use in a live stock market portfolio using Microsoft Excel. So I've already made a video outlining the basics of building a live stock market portfolio using Excel. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out before you watch this one. Just go ahead and click that button in the corner. But today we're going to build on that and look at some more advanced features you can use to track your investments. Excel is a truly wonderful tool that can display all manner of investments in real time with real prices. I really encourage anyone who is trying to build long term wealth using the stock market to at least consider using Microsoft Excel. I find it much better than any brokerage or investment website I've come across anyway. So let's get into it. I'll quickly just go over how to add stocks to the spreadsheet and get them to register with Excel. So as you can see, I've got a list of US shares here, a couple of Australian shares here, Tencent, which is a Hong Kong listed company, although it's dual listed in the US and BP, which is a British company. So let's just start with the US shares. So as I went over in my previous video, all you have to do to link a specific stock into the, your Excel spreadsheet is to simply type the names. So that's all I've done here. Apple, Microsoft, Berkshire Hathaway, highlight them and then click this button stocks. It's under the data tab in Excel. So once you do that, just make sure that each stock is correct because sometimes it gets it wrong. So that all looks good. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is just highlight all of these go to this little box in the corner. Now this gives you all the values you can pull from Excel's online database. So I'm going to go down to ticker symbol to start off with. And as you can see there, they all appear there. Now just because I'm pedantic, I'll make them go in the middle. So they look nice. Okay, second thing I will do. Same thing. Share price. There you go. You can see Berkshire Hathaway is pretty expensive there. Okay. So I'll just make up some arbitrary values for these. So 10 Apple shares, 10 Microsoft shares. We'll just won't get greedy and we'll just have one Berkshire Hathaway share. So 10 Coca-Cola shares, 20 McDonald's shares, because who doesn't like McDonald's? And we'll go 15 Procter and Gamble shares. Okay, now we can use this particular column here to get a estimated port value of our, sh our hypothetical shares in our hypothetical portfolio. So what I'm going to do is type equals, which is the formula um, key in Excel, I'm going to have this cell multiplied, which is star by this cell, and that will give us our portfolio value. Now, if we do the same thing, we can just drag this box down and it will fill that out. I'll just widen that. Yep. Okay. So now we have what looks to be a pretty full portfolio, but let's get into some more advanced stuff. So Mark, the one thing that Excel will not pull, which is extremely annoying, is dividend yield. So I've actually gone and found and entered manually each stock's um, annual dividend in dollar form. Berkshire Hathaway doesn't pay a dividend, of course. And I've got the value here. So if you want a live dividend yield, because remember, an annual dividend only changes at least every three months. So you can have a live yield running in your portfolio for at least three months at a time. Okay, so in order to get the dividend yield, what I'm going to do is just go to yield, put equals there. Then we're going to have the annual dividend divided, which is the slash by the stock price. And that will give us a metric. Now I'll convert this into percentage. So it's a bit easier. There we go. So right now, Apple is offering a 0.93% forward dividend yield on its current stock price. Now we're going to go through and just do that for all the others as well. One. Okay, so as you can see, Coca-Cola's on 3.76%, McDonald's is on 2.78%, Procter & Gamble, so on and so forth. And this will update in real time. So let's just say Coca-Cola goes up to $50 a share tomorrow. That will pull the yield down to 3.28%. So as the share prices update, so will the yield in real time. The only problem with this is you'll just have to go back and make sure the annual dividend is still there. So we'll just go back and restore Coca-Cola's share price. There we go. And we're back in business. So next we're going to talk about foreign shares. So if you live in the US, um, 
So if you live in the United States, then all of these shares might not be familiar to you, but I'll talk you through them. Okay, so these two here are Australian shares. So we're just going to go and pull the data for those as well. Commonwealth Bank's a large bank in Australia and Woolworths is a large grocer, very similar to Walmart. Okay, so as we can see, yep, the ticker symbols are correct, but they do have different exchange um, codes there as well. So that's NYS. This is ASX for Australian Stock Exchange. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here and pull the ticker symbol first. Again, we'll put it in the middle. And then we'll go stock price. Beautiful. And then again, we'll just keep 10 shares, 10 shares. Okay. And then we'll just use the same formula again. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, and same thing again. We'll, we'll just make sure, we'll just get an estimate of what kind of dividend yield we'll get, we can expect from these two stocks. Okay, so it's worth pointing out the Commonwealth Bank probably won't be keeping the same dividend in 2020, but we'll have to see. Just my humble prediction. Okay, Tencent. Now, now Tencent is listed on multiple different stock exchanges, but we're going to pull the data from its native Hong Kong because that's where it's primarily listed. Okay, you can see that is the wrong company there. So let's just try again. Yes, yeah, so normally if it doesn't know, it'll pull up a whole list here. So you can see, yeah, we don't really want Mexican or I'm guessing that's German. Um, so we're just going to see more results and Hong Kong should be here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Okay, so we're going to select Hong Kong. And then finally, we've got BP, or as it was formerly known, British Petroleum, which is a British company. So we're going to pull BP as well. So we'll just try again, just click on stocks, see what happens. Yep, yeah, okay, so it's got London there, so we know that's the British one. Again, we'll put the ticker. If you, if you can't find a company first time, just, just try a few different word combinations and you should be able to get that screen to come up where you can choose. All right, so tick a, tick a symbol, BP, share price. Now that's going to be in pounds, so we'll just fix that up. Well, we should do it for 10 cent too, I guess. Tick a symbol. Yeah, Hong Kong have numbers for ticker symbols, so it's not really that important. So that's, yeah, that's going to be in Hong Kong dollars, and this is going to be in pounds. Uh, it doesn't even have pounds. Oh, yeah, English pound. Yep, yeah, cool. Pounds are actually normally listed in pence, which is a pound cent, um, which is annoying. Okay, and then we'll give ourselves 10, 10 cent shares and 10 BP shares. Okay. Now, same thing here. We'll just give ourselves a value for our hypothetical portfolio. And I won't bother with the dividend yield because we already know how that works. Okay. So now we have a live updating portfolio of a whole bunch of different shares. US listed, Australia, Hong Kong, and Britain. So now we have a portfolio that's listed in a whole bunch of different currencies. So this is quite tricky, but what we'll do is try and get it all back to one currency. So we'll just use US dollars to make it easy. Okay, so we're going to, because these are in US dollars, we can just, all we need to do is go equals this. And then those are all constant currencies. Yep. Okay, but here we have two Australian shares. So what happens if we want to convert this Australian dollar amount into US dollars? Well, we can pull currency data from Excel as well as stock data. So if I wanted to find the Australian dollar relative to the US dollar, I would type in the two currency code. So that's AUD and USD. So I do the same thing. I click on data, stocks, and it will pull up. Now, this is an exchange rate and not a stock. So if you can see there's, there's a whole lot less options here, but let's just go to price and that will give us the exchange rate. So at the moment, one Australian dollar will buy 69 US cents. 
So what I'm going to do is because this value is in Australian dollars, I'm going to put it in US dollars in this column. So what I'm going to do, put equals this sign, this cell, sorry, times this cell. And that will give us a dollar value in US dollars. So these Commonwealth Bank of Australia shares are worth $685 dollars and 80 cents in Australia dollars but only 471 dollars and 49 cents in US dollars now we can do the same thing here as well except that won't give us the right one will it there we go same thing 363 250 now 10 cent is listed in Hong Kong dollars so we're going to do the same thing I don't actually know the Hong Kong dollar sign I'm hoping it's that um, same thing Yep, price. Okay, so okay, so one Hong Kong dollar is worth thirteen US cents. Great, and we'll do the same thing. Great, British pound, uh, US dollar. Look at that; it's pulled it for us now. So same thing. We'll go to price. There you go. Okay, so same thing but different. Go to this cell here, times this cell here there you go so the 10 cent is worth 4860 hong kong dollars but only 626 dollars and 94 cents american now we'll do the same thing for the british um that should be in pounds cool all right so we'll go this cell times the british cell and that will give us the amount in US dollars. Yes, okay. So they have it foreign currencies, but that's not all we can do with Excel. So now we're going to have a look at, say if you've got some other assets in your portfolio, maybe you invest in precious metals. So we're going to have a look at precious metals as well, which you can also use Excel for. So this one's not as hard. All you have to do is say you own some gold. So we'll type in gold and maybe some silver as well and some platinum maybe if you think the government's are about to collapse you'd buy these sort of sorts of things okay so we're going to go gold first we'll go data stocks it's not the one we want so we'll go gold again unfortunately that's the ticker symbol for gold All right, so I've just typed in gold future, just because that's, I believe, what Excel lists. Yeah, okay, so we've got Barrett Gold there, Gold Mine and Gold Bond. Okay, this is the one we want. So this is gold, the future price. So it's not actually the spot price, but it's the price that the future contracts are trading, which is normally very, very close. Okay, so gold's here. Now we'll do the same thing with silver. Again, that's ridiculous. Yeah, this can often be a bit of a bit of a sticking point, but okay, there we go. Silver futures. So we'll do the same thing. Precious metals are always priced in US dollars, so that's nice and easy. And then again, we'll do the same thing for platinum. silver obviously don't have ticker symbols so we'll just put the um, just some random symbols in there okay now we can get a price now this price will be per ounce because precious metals are measured in ounces and they're in dollars so we'll just change that back okay so say we own two ounces of gold ten ounces of silver let's go 30 actually just to make it better Actually, you know what I'm feeling rich let's go 100 and three ounces of platinum so the same thing there we go
So this will tell us that we have $3,571 worth of gold in our portfolio. I'll just clean that up a bit. $1,800 of silver and $2,400 of platinum. Okay, and because they're all priced in US dollars, we'll just put their normal price in here. Okay, guys, so this is this is uh, a pretty basic outline. There's almost nothing you really can't track in an Excel portfolio these days, and they seem to be working on it all the time, so it should be getting better and better. I love it. Um, I use it for all of my investing stuff and, and it's just really it's just really fun to play around with you can do some hypothetical stuff you can track your own investments it's just a great way to get everything you own all on one screen okay guys thanks so much for watching I really appreciate it if you haven't already make sure you hit that like button or subscribe if you haven't already because we do videos on this kind of stuff all the time and I'd love to have you on board my channel I'm learning as much as you guys are and I love sharing my journey so if you want to join that journey please consider hitting the subscribe button. But thank you so much for watching anyway, and I will be back with some more videos soon. But for now, good night.